Normally on this subject, you will find me ranting and raving, and I might, so you might have to forgive me on some things. It's come to my attention that Derek Chauvin, murderer, convicted murderer of George Floyd, is trying to appeal his court, appeal his conviction, to toss his murder conviction out. Now, I don't have a problem with this, honestly. I mean, there is no one in this country that doesn't deserve the right to appeal his or her conviction. That's a right guaranteed to us by the United States Constitution. And even a scumbag like Derek Chauvin deserves that, that right, of course. However, the defense is, his um, defense attorney decided to go say, say this. Now, his lawyer, there, William Mormon, Morham, I don't even know how to say his name, anyway, argued that extensive pretrial publicity made it impossible for Chauvin to get a fair trial in 2021 and said that the remedy is that they're seeking a new trial. Quoting him and his argument before the three panel um, judges, our primary argument here is that the case could not be tried in Minneapolis because of the pretrial publicity was pervasive. And also, the just this physical presence on the courthouse, unquote. Now, I got no problem with this at all, and that argument could possibly work. I mean, we all, everyone in the country, if not everyone on the planet, saw that video once or twice on the news or online. There's no argument on that. We, that argument can possibly, say, it could possibly work. However, would it actually affect the evidence? That was Derek Chauvin doing this. That was Derek Chauvin killing George Floyd, regardless of how much drugs was in Floyd. As the, uh, as the same idiotic argument comes for, he was high on cocaine. So what? That earned him an automatic death sentence from an amped up cop looking to kill? See, the fact is, this argument, while well-meaning, has, no has no merit in this, entire, this case. Now, this is coming from a former acting U.S. Solicitor General, Neil uh, Ketrin, representing the state of Minnesota, countered the defense's claims by calling Derek Chauvin's trial, and I quote, one of the most transparent and thorough in our nation's history, unquote. It had to be. This was the first time, the very first time a police officer was caught, well, not the first time he was caught on a camera, but the first time the evidence was the pointing directly at the accused. It had to be Pharaoh, because if it wasn't, Derek Chauvin would have gotten away with it. Now, Mr. Kentrell also said, that many of the arguments before the appeals court do not come close to justifying a reversal. And even if they did, the evidence of, jo of Chauvin's guilt was captured on video for the world to see, unquote. Yes, it was. Now, you can argue that George Floyd was a scumbag. And I'll, and I'll join you in those arguments considering his rap sheet. However, that did not give the right for Derek Chauvin to act as judge jury and executioner, no matter how many arguments you give, no matter if he wore the badge and the gun. As a police officer, he should know, he should have known better than to act as judge, jury, and executioner. He's going to prison. And frankly, and here's the thing about this whole thing, that even if the Minnesota three-judge panel gives him the appeal, he's still going to prison anyway. Because let's not forget, let's not forget something. That while he may be um, let go of the state charges, the federal charges are a hell of a lot harder. Now again, the state of, of um, I'm sorry, Minnesota, the Herpin, the Herpin County Judge Pierre Kyle sentenced him to 22 and a half years in state penitentiary. 
A federal judge later sentenced Chauvin to 21 years for violating Floyd's civil rights. Now, here's where the oops comes in on this. Chauvin is serving both sentences concurrently in a federal prison in Arizona. Now, he waived his right to appeal under the federal plea deal, which is why he's only pursuing it in state court. Because of the differences in parole eligibility between the Minnesota prison system and the federal prison system, he st- is poised to still nearly ne- to spend nearly three more years behind bars than he would have if it was only the state murder conviction. In other words, in order, even if Chauvin were to appeal in a state court, he would still could be served considerable amount of time in a federal court. So. State, have a dude. The feds, they own your ass. You see, what really bothers me about this, and and this is the only thing that bothers me about it, not not the appeal from the state court, because even if he wins the state appeal, his ass is still going to federal prison for the rest of his life, for at least 20 years. But that's here nor there. He's still going to prison one way or another. What bothers me is the defenses that I keep hearing from people on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and elsewhere trying to cheer on Derek Chauvin. I'm right now in the middle of a Facebook, at the time of the making this video, I'm in the middle of a Facebook battle with a clown saying that Derek Chauvin should be released, that all the, all the excuses, Chauvin should be released, that George Floyd's a thug that he died from from drugs instead of a knee to the neck. Hell, he even argued that he died from COVID rather than than the knee to the neck. See, what bothers me about this is that we all saw that video, all of us. The evidence was looking directly at his face and the faces of the cops around him. Now, I'm not a vicious person or a vengeful person. I'm a man who believes in the law. Derek Chauvin broke the law. Now, if he gets appealed in state court, fine. Congratulations. Your ass still belongs to the feds, motherfucker. And you might be able to get get paroled somehow out in three or four years, but your ass is, is lunch meat. You're still going to be someone's prag. If I have to go do a crime myself to get myself locked up, you're going to be somebody's prag, son. You see, Chauvin, you're a murderer, and you used your badge to to try to cover it up. You said, I'm a cop. I can do whatever I want. You got a whole gaggle of people out there saying, he's a cop. He can do whatever he wants. Don't lock him up. He's a cop. He can do whatever he wants. Not anymore. You want us to live by the law, regular citizens of all colors? You, the people in blue who are trusted to enforce the laws, are going to be held accountable by the law. Now, if that sounds like some kind of threat to you, if you want to pull the you threaten me crap, then it is a threat. But here's the thing. I'm threatening you with the law. I want you handcuffed and placed on trial and found guilty, you're going to prison. I have no gun, I got no weapons. I'm no threat to anybody. Here on YouTube, I just make videos about stuff that pisses me off or makes me happy. You, on the other hand, police officers, have have the power of life and death in your hands. And maybe you get off on that. Maybe you love love that, but in the end of the day, you've shown yourselves that you may not be able to be trusted by the law. Because every time, every time something like this happens, every time we have another Derek Chauvin situation here, we're going to ask the same question over and over again. Was it really necessary? And if you're man enough, if you got the balls to admit it, you'll answer those questions.
But like Derek Chauvin and so many other cops out there who use their badge or use the blue wall as a shield to hide their cowardice, you won't. So good luck in state court. But your ass is still doing federal time. CTP, know the truth. God bless. Peace to the left. Justice to the right.